Greetings. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. I'm Lexi Eve, and welcome back to another Walk Magic video. Today, we're beginning the first of three videos about the text by Alistair Crowley, Lieber HHH. So with that, let's begin. All right, Lieber HHH is a practical meditation text. I would call it under the label mysticism. And it utilizes visuals to go through three methods of sequential astral visions. Its full title is Libre HHH, Subfigura, 341, Cotinet, Capitula, Tria, AAA, MMM, et SSS. So that Latin title, Continent, Capitula, Tria, means having three chapters. Straightforward. In my opinion, Libre HHH, those three H's, signifies the fourth element, Earth, as in He, in yod He vav He. That would be the final He, thus. The three methods, MMM, AAA, and SSS, are the other three elements. And those three methods lead to a manifestation, or rather a becoming, a physical becoming, by going through the text, thus HHH. So you go through these three portions. Uh, the first one is MMM. So this text is broken down into three sections, as I said. And they represent the three mother letters. Aleph is A, Mem is water, Shin is fire. Thus, the H's in the title uh, complete the elements. Quick note, the subfigure of the text 341 is the value of the Hebrew term Amesh, meaning death or to pass away. This word is indicative of the text's purpose, which is to conquer death and understand eternal life, and that the word is composed of the same three mother letters it is just uncanny. Amesh is A M Shin, Aleph Mem Shin. So it's kind of interesting. With all of that said, let's look at the first section, which is M M M. It begins with a quote from Lieber 7, chapter 7, verses 15 and 16. Quote, I remember a certain holy day in the dusk of the year, in the dusk of the equinox of Osiris, when first I beheld thee visibly, when first the dreadful issue was fought out, when the ebus headed one charmed away the strife. I remember thy first kiss, even as a maiden should, nor in the dark byways was there another. Thy kisses abide." End quote. The letter Mem corresponds with the hangman tarot card. Thus, this practice reflects the imagery of that card as does the above quote, indicating the morning of Isis crying for her slain husband. But death is no longer a gloomy affair of grief and sorrow. Thus the Ebus-headed one, the Magus, whose word is the Lima, charms away all strife. So what does this practice actually entail? Verse 0, quote, Be seated in thine asana, wearing the robe of a neophyte, the hood drawn, end quote. Note that the first practice, which we are now going over, is for a neophyte of AA. And then the next two practices could be for the zealotur and practicus, or just the zealotur, depending on when you do it or when it's assigned to you. The robe of the neophyte is a simple black towel robe with elongated handholds, elongated hood, which can be completely drawn over the face and has eye holes that should be cut into it. Verse 1, quote, it is night, heavy and hot. There are no stars. Not one breath of wind stirs the surface of the sea. That is thou. No fish play in thy depths." End quote. Every part of Libra HHH is performed just line by line over many, many months until you get it perfect. Once it's perfected over a dozen attempts, then you move on to the next verse. So to start this first verse, I recommend sitting in your asana for at least 20 minutes to a half hour of perfect stillness and then begin this first line. Once you have maintained that perfect stillness, astrally allow your being to increase in size and morph into a lake, vast size or a seabed, invoking the idea as well as the feeling of water on your skin is quite helpful. Now, by force of will and stillness of mind, make that water absolutely still, not a wave, not a breeze above it, no stars in the sky, just a black expanse above you. No motion or any change of any kind can take place in or around, in, on, or around this body of water that you have made yourself become. Maintain this image in your astral sight for a lengthy period of time. There's no set rule. Perhaps your instructor, if you're in AA, will give you a specific amount of time. Perhaps you will determine it on your own. 
though anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes should suffice of absolute stillness before moving on to the next verse. So like I said, um, this is a slow going practice to be done several times a day over weeks or months if necessary until it's perfected. So don't cheat yourself, dedicate the time and amazing results of mental control will follow. Just take it verse by verse. Do this first verse for, I don't know, anywhere three weeks to a month, maybe two months until it's perfect. Then you're gonna add verse two. Quote, let a breath rise and ruffle the waters. This also thou shalt feel playing upon thy skin. It will disturb thy meditation twice or thrice, after which thou shouldst have conquered this distraction. But unless thou first feel it, that breath hath not arisen. End quote. There's a book by Donald Tyson, uh, The Magician's Workbook. And Tyson, in that text, has a practice utilizing the rosy cross. So the rosy cross has four elemental arms, earth on the lower portion, fire on the left, water on the right, and air on the top. In that practice by Tyson, you lay down with your feet together and on outstretched legs and your arms outstretched to the sides so that your body resembles a cross. And one at a time, you force your limbs to feel the element which correspond with that portion of the cross. So it would actually be your right arm corresponding to the left of the, so your right arm would be fire, your left arm would be water, your legs and feet would be earth, and your upper torso from the shoulders up would be air. And you take it one at a time, and by will you force um, that feeling of that element to, so you'd feel moisture on your left arm, you'd feel warmth like you're next to a fire on your right make a breeze be felt from your shoulders up on your head as if air is blowing on you even though it's not and make earth wet dirt or dry dirt sand the feeling of it pouring on your legs um, if you undertake that practice for a few weeks until it's perfected this one should be very easy so how i use the second verse of libra hhh is i begin by taking a very deep physical breath and as i inhale I force the vision of a gust of wind rippling the waters across the surface of the lake that I've made myself astrally turn into. And then by willing it to happen, I force the feeling of said breeze all across and through my body as if that rippling wind is stirring the water that I'm made out of. And you have to actually feel that occurring. It's not just a mental thing. It's, even though the sensations all take place in the brain, that pulse has to be felt on your nerve endings in the body and respond to the brain. So you have to be able to force your body to feel something that's not actually happening to it. Now, a yogi, like a magician, must have absolute control over their entire body. This practice is but a beginner stage in that process, to be able to force your body to feel what you will it to feel, whether that thing is happening or not. In the early phases of my practices, I would meditate with my eyes open, I would induce a trance state in a particular way that would eventually force my vision to become hazy because my eyes were open. Then my vision would darken and then it would black out altogether. And I kept this practice going until I also shut down my hearing, until I couldn't hear anything. My ears would turn off. I then shut down my ability to smell. Taste was not really an issue as I wasn't eating anything. And from there, I worked towards shutting down any physical sensation in my body. Um, so once these five feelings were shut down, uh, my five senses, it left something else behind that was perhaps only mental, the bare ego in a void, or maybe something you'd consider spiritual. The body senses had all one by one been null and voided. If you haven't taken up such a practice, I'd recommend learning how to do so, as control over one's body is a mandatory part of the magical and mystical path. So if you can do that, you are well on your way to causing sensations that are not actually happening to be felt by the body when you will them to happen. So when you could cause the feel of the breeze on and in your body rippling on that astral lake, you've become um, two or three times without any issues, you'll have completed the second verse. So however long that takes, it could be a week, it could be three months, whatever, and we'll move on to verse three after that. Quote, Next, the night is riven by a lightning flash. This also shalt thou feel in thy body, which shall shiver and leap with the shock. 
and that also must be both suffered and overcome, end quote. I recommend causing an astral lightning flash to occur visually upon the lake you are, that you are still in the shape of. Now, a storm of sorts is about to brew. This line, to me, is very much like the lightning strike of God smashing the tower. And I cause it to occur in the center of my being, straight down the spinal column. So severe that it actually makes your body sh uh, shake with its crack. Now, this may be easy to produce for some, difficult for others. There's no way of truly passing on how to do it verbally. You must just keep at it until it finally happens. If you keep the visual going long enough, eventually, by forcing that feeling, it'll just happen. And after you've learned what you need to do in order to cause that proper effect to happen to you, it should become very easy after that for future attempts. After you've perfected doing lines 1, 2, and 3, now we're going to move on to verse 4 and add that to it. Quote, After the lightning flash resteth in the zenith a minute point of light, and that light shall radiate until a right cone be established upon the sea, and it is day. With this thy body shall be rigid automatically, and this shalt thou let endure, withdrawing thyself into thine heart in the form of an upright egg of blackness. And therein shalt thou abide for a space, end quote. So a zenith is a point in the sky directly above an observer. So here for your visuals, the lightning strike flashes, makes you in the shape uh, of a lake that was still, suddenly quiver. And then as the light turns uh, back from night into day, a small minute point of light in the sky appears above you. From this point of light, a cone descends from it, or just appears, resting from that point of light where its tip is to the flat part of the bottom of the cone resting upon the lake. And it's so large that its base it touches the lake. So daylight occurs as you perfect this visual. Now, if you have long since mastered asana, which you should have, you should be able to cause body rigidity when you need it. Coupled with the intensity of these visuals so far, it should occur now so that your body is rock solid. Now from here, still maintaining the visuals around you, uh, daytime, yourself as a lake, a cone, resting upon that lake, reaching up to a minute point of light way up in the zenith above you. Enter into the shape of your body for, and withdraw into the heart center and make a egg of light appear radiating from that heart center inside the cone and so that the cone and your aura your egg of light are overlapping and rest within the center of it where your heart would be so this is done by withdrawing all of your being into your heart center and then creating that egg of light made of and that uh egg of light is dark light of blackness as the text said just to quote it again withdrawing thyself into thine heart in the form of an upright egg of blackness right so after this, uh, when you have managed uh, to perfect that part, verse 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4, move on to verse 5. Quote, When all this is perfectly and easily performed at will, let the aspirant figure to himself a struggle with the whole force of the universe. In this, he is only saved by his minuteness, but in the end, he is overcome by death, which covers him with a black cross. Let his body fall supine with arms outstretched. End quote. So again, each verse can take days, weeks, or even months to truly perfect, and you should be doing it multiple times a day. That is all dependent upon the individual. The most important factor is to be honest with yourself whether you have perfected the verse or not before you move on, and you add the next verse to the previous ones. So when you know that you have perfected all the previous stuff, the next part is to create the sensation of a struggle between self and the universe. You are withdrawn inside that heart center, inside an egg made of black light within a cone of astral light, resting upon a lake with its, the point of the cone all the way at that point of light in the zenith. Right? It's a lot of visuals. Um, how I did this was I created two forces. The universe in all 360 degrees of directions pulled at my being in an attempt to force my microcosm, which was crushed down into the size of Hadith, the center of space. It was trying everywhere, 360 degrees around me was pulling 
even though I was so minute. So I was contracting myself into that minuteness. While I'm withdrawing into that point of minute light in the center of the black egg, it happened to be under such pressure that that pull just couldn't do anything to me. I was too small for it to truly affect me, so I ended up just sitting there floating. If every direction is pulling at something, what would it do? It would just rest in the center, right? If, if you put, apply a perfect um, pull on every point in 360 degrees, well, that point can't go anywhere because it's being pulled with the same amount of pressure in all degrees, in all angles, rather. Note also that the black egg is the Hindu tattva for the element of spirit. The expansion and contraction represent new wheat, as the universe, and Hadid as the center of space and one's being. So there's an interplay going on here of micro and macrocosms, above and below. A realization must occur that the only factor which keeps you from being pulled apart is your infinite smallness, and that you're in the center, being pulled in all directions, but you're so small that you can't grow anymore. See, matter cannot be destroyed. So the infinitely small particle that you have become, resting in that heart center, in the egg of light, in the cone, is so small, it's too small to be stretched without deteriorating. And since energy and matter cannot be destroyed, that smallness saves you from the forces that you have invoked. When that realization has occurred, then you move on. But verse 5 ends by saying, quote, But in the end he is overcome by death, who covers him with a black cross. Let his body fall supine with arms outstretched, end quote. This I interpret as causing a darkness to wash over your entire being, especially your consciousness, and clearing away all of your astral visuals you have thus created so far. Then with your physical body, fall back and lay out in the sign of the cross with arms and legs outstretched and have a black cross cover your body on the astral plane. Death must overcome you, so everything in your mind, everything in your body must shut down momentarily. Not easy to do. But if you practice it, it will occur. When you've done that, now we're going to add verse 6 to this. Quote, So, so lying, let him aspire fervently unto the holy guardian angel. End quote. In column 45 of Libra 777, the neophyte is supposed to attain, quote, the vision of the holy guardian angel. End quote. Now this can happen at any time based on the work that one is doing in said grade. It is not attainment of knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel by any means. I've seen people mistake it as that and then go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. It could be a glimpse of the entity, but more commonly it is a mental state, an attitude or understanding of the need to attain to the Holy Guardian Angel. It more commonly is that mental state. It most probably will occur much later after finishing this practice. For now, you're just fervently aspiring unto the angel. The point of verse 6 is to build up in your soul the desire towards your angel in an attempt to attract it to you. The same feeling you would have towards a lover or even water while dying in the desert sun. When verse 1 through 6 are completed and perfected, move on. Verse 7, quote, Now let him resume his former posture. So go back into your asana. Two and twenty times shall he figure to himself that he is bitten by a serpent, feeling even in his body the poison thereof. And let each bite be healed by an eagle or hawk spreading its wings above his head and dropping thereupon a healing dew. But let the last bite be so terrible, a pang at the, ne at the nape of the neck, that he seemeth to die. And let the healing dew be of such virtue that he leapeth to his feet. End quote. So you go back to your chosen asana position that you were just in a few minutes ago. You can then either set back up all of the visuals of the lake, the cone, the zenith light, the egg, or at the very least that egg of light with yourself in your uh, asana position. Or you could do that at the beginning of verse 8, your choice. Now follow the words. I choose to envision an astral serpent when I did this practice. You could just imagine being struck and the feeling of being struck and not actually see the serpent strike you, but it helped me to create an astral serpent which strikes me 22 times. And each time I'm struck, it fills me with a deadly poison. Imagine growing incredibly weak, like you are dying. You have to physically feel like your energy is depleting. If you're not physically feeling that, 
If you're not spiritually feeling like you are being pit and poisoned, you haven't completed this verse. After each bite, envision a hawk or an eagle on the astral. For me, the eagle is best, for it corresponds with Scorpio, A213, death. Well, whatever you choose, the hawk or the eagle, it spreads its wings as it slowly hovers in the zenith. And from it, a healing dew is dripped upon you, which heals the poison of the serpent. I visualized two things when I did this. One was a teardrop. The other was a moisture from its wings, which fell upon my wounds and thus healed me. So you could be creative. Maybe it just drips down from its wings. Um, the text does not exactly say. Uh, it just says that it spreads its wings above the head, dropping there upon a healing dew. So however you want to interpret that. On the 22nd, on the 22nd bite, let it strike your neck and hold for so long that you almost fade out on the astral. But just at the last moment, a larger dewdrop of mortality shall fall upon your astral being than all the others. And at that moment, you're about to wink out forever. This drop of dew heals you with a blast that was stronger than all of the other healing drops put together thus far. When you've perfected this, we add verse 8, quote, let there now be placed within his egg a red cross, then a green cross, then a golden cross, then a silver cross, or those things which these shadow forth. Herein is silence, for he that hath rightly performed the meditation will understand the inner meaning hereof, and it shall serve as a test of himself and his fellows. End quote. So if you didn't already set up all those previous visuals, you should set them up now. The egg, the cone, the lake, the sky, which is daytime. Um, and then we're going to change the color of that cross that had been over your body before. And you, So you have a choice. You can make a series of crosses, and they'll change color from, what was it, uh, a red cross, a green cross, a golden cross, then a silver cross. Or you could choose any symbol which represents the same thing. So what are these symbols? Such as the yin-yang or the hexagram, the circle and the cross, the lingam and the yoni, etc. Even baphomet would be a suitable symbol. But the simpler is better. So the cross, which has a horizontal line representing the feminine and a vertical line representing the masculine, is very simple and it should suffice. Whatever you choose, let's say you choose the yin-yang symbol, you want to make it still in those same colors. So a red yin-yang, so it could be red and white. Right, that would be suitable. Um, then green and white, then gold, then silver. Right, so you choose whatever symbol you want. The cross is just very simple because it's one thing that comprises these two polarities. So take your time making these astral crosses or what have you up here, and make the crosses hold for some minutes each. So the red one, then the green one. 15 minutes total should be good enough. 10 is even acceptable because now we're getting close to an hour that you've been doing this. When you have done this first until you reach a realization about what the symbol means to your inner plane of existence, that's when you're ready to move on to verse 9. So verse 9, quote, Let him now remain in the pyramid or cone of light as an egg, but no more of blackness, end quote. So simple enough. Now you remain still in your uh, asana posture, astrally viewing the cone and your body of light as an egg-shaped cocoon. But make sure the light is now no longer black. It turns into normal electric blue astral color or white light, whatever you choose. Remain like this for several minutes until it feels revitalizing. After a couple dozen attempts of the first method, when you have gotten to the point of starting at verse 0 and finishing at verse 9, we're going to now add verse 10 to the mix. Quote, Then let his body be in the position of the hanged man, and let him aspire with all his force unto the holy guardian angel. End quote. So you should do many attempts, a few more dozen over the course of several weeks of verses 0 through 10. Right? You begin verse 10 by holding that egg of bright light in the cone of light, but now shift your physical body back onto the floor and enter the hangman posture of asana. So again, A212, the hangman, corresponds with the letter mem, which is water. Most important here are two things. First, that the hangman symbolizes the sacrifice of self, 
and the position represents being nailed upon the cross. Thus, the cross is the union of masculine and feminine lines, symbolizing the magician in union with their holy guardian angel. Uh, also, the hangman is in the a, a posture which represents uh, the symbol of sulfur, even though the triangle with your arms uh, outstretched at uh, 60 degree angles, 45 degree angles, whatever they are, uh, it's like an upside down triangle, but the leg, the right leg crossed over the left. You're making a cross with your legs and then a triangle. So it's it's sulfur, essentially, which is pretty interesting, um, considering that sulfur on the tree of life co would correspond with chakma, which is uh, the root seed of will, or the seed of true will, rather. Um, so next, while aspiring to your holy guardian angel in this hangman posture, you are quite literally attempting to give yourself to your holy guardian angel as your spiritual lover. The hanged man as a sacrifice represents giving up the ego for guidance of the highest. In my experience with the holy guardian angel, it is a deeper love and connection than you could ever have with any physical or spiritual being of any other kind. It essentially is a oneness that until you've felt that, there's no describing it, but it, it's the most intimate love affair that you will ever have. So do verses 1 or 0 through 10 um, until it seems fitting and that you've completed, until you feel like you cannot strive anymore, that you've strove towards the HGA as much as possible. Bear in mind, after all of the intense visuals you have gone through over the past months of this practice, this final position of being in the hangman posture, being the culmination of the work of this method, should feel like a great place to rest the body while you wind down, much like entering savasana after um, a long series of hatha yoga postures, or vinyasa they're called. When you do a series of hatha yoga postures, that's called a vinyasa. It's a series of postures. So you get tired out, so you're astrally exhausting yourself, and now you're resting in this hangman posture. But though your body may rest, your mind should continue to be exhausted. Nay, your soul should strive ever on with all the energy you can muster towards communication with your holy guardian angel. When you could no longer strive anymore, when you've given all of yourself to that angel, finally, we're going to add verse 11, quote, the grace having been granted unto him, let him partake mystically of the Eucharist of the five elements and let him proclaim light and extension. Yea, let him proclaim light and extension. End quote. The grace of the light of the HGA, a glimpse of it, or even a knowing that you are absolutely striving towards it and will one day hit your mark, may suffice. This very last verse instructs to, quote, partake mystically of the Eucharist of the five elements and let him proclaim light and extension, end quote. Note that uh, via this practice, we are very focused upon the symbolism of the cross, which I've spoken about numerous times. But I just want to emphasize something. What is the Eucharist of five elements? Well, I speak about it in my Magic Indirian video, um, on chapter 20 of the, of the Eucharist. In chapter 20 of Magic and Theory and Practice, it says, quote, The Eucharist of five has for a basis wine for taste, a rose for smell, a flame for sight, a bell for sound, and a dagger for touch. This sacrament is implied in the Mass of the Phoenix in a slightly different form. End quote. So that's chapter 20 of Magic and Theory and Practice. There are numerous ways to employ a ritual that utilizes these implements. You should devise your own. You can look deeply into the Mass of the Phoenix for insight into how that ritual employs this type of Eucharist. I have a video about this Eucharist, about the Eucharist in general, and the Mass of the Phoenix in this channel, which should help. But ultimately, you should create your own ritual that um, consecrates these items and partakes of them. Interesting that the text is all mis mystical and astral, but then this last verse could be magical, magic. My opinion is that this indicates a few things. One, the turning inward to receive light, and then using that light externally. Two, partaking of the Eucharist of the five elements strictly on the astral plane, in which case you need to learn how to force the smell of a rose, the taste of wine, even when you're not physically partaking of these things. Or the third thing it can imply, for those capable, sex magic. Any of these methods are plausible. 
Experimentation will tell you which is best suited for your own nature. James Eshelman writes in his book, The Magical and Mystical System of the AA, quote, the first of these practices, MMM, called the illumination of the sphere, is a meditative reenactment of the inner operation of the neophyte ceremony, ritual 671, end quote. So I would recommend reviewing uh, Liber Pyramido 671. Review that text, which I've, I've done part of a, of a breakdown of that text uh, in a video on this channel, um, Grimorium Sanctissimum. So I broke down that sex magic text by Crowley, and part of it is using a lengthy portion of uh, Liber Pyramidos. So you could check out my video on Grimorium Sanctissimum, which will yield a great deal about your options and overall insights for this portion of Liber HHH. What have you? You have three options, right? You could physically have those five elements there. You could just partake of them quickly, consecrate them, partake of them. You could write a whole elaborate ritual for verse 11 that uses these five different Eucharistic elements. Or um, partake of them astrally. Or even use sex magic. Um, I have videos on sex magic on this channel if you don't know how to do that. Whatever you choose, um, you need to perfect that last part. And so looking at verse 11, um, proclaim light and extension, yea, let him proclaim light and extension. Um, what does that mean, light and extension? It's a very interesting thing. When you're extending light, what are you actually doing? There's something to consider. I, I might do a, a video about Kongs Unpacks, light and extension, Cobbs Unpacked, right? It's a very interesting um, concept that first you have to have light. First, you have to be able to touch light. You have to ha you have to possess it in order to extend it. There's something very interesting there. So you have to be able to bring that into you to to then. It's like you can't extend what you don't have. You see what I mean? Um, so what does it mean to actually extend light? Light and extension. Well, light is extended everywhere. The light has descended. It's extended from above. Um, it's descended. So once it descends, what does it do? It returns back up. Um, proclaiming light and extension, you could just do the series of knocks like they do in the Golden Dawn. Cobbs, om, pecked, conks, om, packed, light, in, extension. You could do something like that. You could do uh, astral from your heart extending light. There are many options. What does that mean? Let him proclaim light and extension. Uh, there's something very interesting there to consider. Um, I'm going to leave you there. there. There's many options on interpretation in this text, um, but I think I've given enough that anybody should be able to utilize this method of Liber HHH sufficiently at this point. So I don't think there's too much more I can add. It just it takes a long time. Each method took me, I think, like six to seven months, most of these, um, each, you know. You should be doing, um, let's say you're up to verse three, so you're doing verses one, two, and three. You know, each por each verse could take three to three weeks to a couple months to perfect, if depending on where you're at in magic. Um, you could also take four months to do one verse and you get every other verse in two days perfectly and you really get the result. You know, it, it's a matter of honesty, like I said earlier. Just uh, don't cheat yourself. Do it multiple times a day. Do those, whatever verse you're on, do all of the batches, like one through three. Do that three or four times a day. Don't cheat yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Be honest. And uh, yeah, I think I've given you enough on how to use this. So I'm going to end here. I'm going in circles. Love is the law. Love under will. I'll see you all in the next one.